Hi guys, if it's Friday, it's down in dirty woods crap. You ain't heard that in a while, have you? Okay guys, today we're gonna do a down and dirty, do-it-yourself little project. Uh, about two weeks ago, something like that, I was talking to my good friend James Bender. And if you're not familiar with James Bender's channel of Waypoint Survival, you really should check him out. Really good content. Well, one of the things that James does is he does a historic hobo segment where he's talking about tips and tricks of the hobos the early 1900s. And one of the things that I stumbled upon in my looking was a lamp, a pocket lamp that just screamed to me hobo, right? Although the one I saw was actually, I think, World War II. But this type of little bitty foxhole lantern goes all the way back, probably back to the Civil War. You know, you keep finding references to them, little bitty things, but in a nutshell what it is, it's a small bottle. Now, the one that I sent the picture to James and James created his off of is they had taken a small glass bottle, something like this. This one, make sure it's glass. You don't want plastic, but the thick glass. This is one of them little bitty alcohol bottles like you get it's got vodka in it or whatever you can get at the liquor stores and stuff like that good thick glass holds up well in the field yes you can break it but it can handle a little bit of handling and i recommend some sort of bottle that is meant to hold liquids particularly alcohol because of the seal in them there's a little seal up in that top and alcohol not only will um leak Alcohol will pressurize if it gets hot. Remember, it wants to evaporate. So that means that seal's got to be strong enough to hold in that alcohol. Otherwise, it would, even though the lid never, seal never been broken, it could evaporate. So they make a tougher seal to squeeze down and hold that pressure. That's probably going to hold any kerosene or oil or olive oil we put into this and not have to worry about leakage, right? So whatever's going in the bottle originally, I recommend an alcohol bottle or something like that. Now, if you don't do alcohol, you also find like uh, lemon extract, uh, vanilla extract, and other little bitty bottles like this, uh, old medicine bottles. But the ones that we saw that James was talking about from the hobos, that was like the mosquito repellent of World War II came in a little bitty glass bottle like that. They were issued to troops like that, and they were repurposing it. And what they did was they took an empty cartridge case drilled out where the primer went, put a piece of tubing in it, and put it in with a wick in it, and used it that way. And James created a facsimile of it, and it worked really good, and it's gone big, a 300-something thousand views. So that shows right there, there is an interest in this. And how many of you have talked about wanting to carry a kerosene lamp or something to camp for an, just a little lamp there? We're not talking about leave it all on over, overnight, but at the same time, having like equivalent of a candle, a little oil lamp, okay? This is a down and dirty way to do it nice and easy. So I took a glass bottle. The other thing is I went to the craft department and I got a little 20 gauge of the size wire I used, and this was like three bucks at Walmart. And it's about the right thickness and stiffness for what we're about to do. The other thing is a wick, and I went and picked up a small lantern wick from my hobby store. This was the, the real small little quarter inch, little bitty flat wick, you know, like the little hurricane lamps. That's what that wick is. You could also use densely woven 100% cotton string. You don't want to use nylon because it melts. It has to be cotton or something that's going to wick, okay? So that's the reason I look for one of these little lantern wicks. Now what I've done is I've take that, taken that wire and I've done this. I took the wire and made a long piece, folded it in half. Let me show you that. Okay, all I've done, I'm going to do this in miniature. I took a piece of the wire, I folded it, and got roughly the center. Okay, right there. Now when I get there, what I'm going to do is I'm going to pinch it between my fingers, and I'm going to separate the wires, and I'm going to twist the wires like three times. Stop. That little piece right there is going to become important. We're going to fold it down when we put the wick in here. And that's going to put tension inside the neck so it doesn't fall in. How long a piece of wire? 
we want the wire long enough that when it goes in, it goes all the way to the bottom, and it's not just straight up in the center, it's off to the side, so that no matter what, it can't fall in any further. And I want it just below the very top. So when I put this lid on, it's not binding up, but the wick will be just below that top edge, okay? And so I want the wire to come all the way down here and come up. So I've roughly made it, I'll just make it too long. That's exactly what I did. I made it too long. And then I started twisting. When I got two or three folds out like that, I'm going to stick the wick in, and then I'm going to twist it again and twist this all the way down. When I get to the very bottom, I'm going to put the other end of the wick in there and give it one little twist on it there. So that you have this. Here's the top of the wick. Here's that little piece I folded over right there and then folded the wire and then it's just spiraling down that piece of wire. Now I take the bottle and I may need to trim the overall length to get it right but I want to be able to put the wick in. And notice there's too much wick. I want it laying on bottom to help start siphoning the fluid up, the fuel up. I put it in there and then when I get there at the top I want to make this wire bent out where it's just big enough that it kind of with friction goes in just a little like that. See, when I push it all the way down, see how that wire's hit the bottom? Now, that's there and that wick is sticking up, but when you push the wick down, it's flush. That way the wick stands up. I put the lid on and the wick lays down. So it's sealed up, it can't go nowhere, okay? Now we're going to improve it just a little bit more. And the original had a grenade ring wired to the neck of it. Why? I'll show you why. It's a way to hang the lantern up at night on a stick. And we're going to show that in just a minute. So I'll take this little piece of wire I clipped off. And I'm going to open it back up. Okay. Now I got the wire all the way up. I'm going to put that. This is a key ring. Put a key ring on there. I'm going to bring it down. I'm going to give it like two twists. Then I'm going to take that wire and go back through it again. This will make sense in a minute. Pull her down. Pinch it together. Give it two more twists, just like that. Now with this opened, I'm going to take the bottle. And you see that little ring that's left whenever they pop the top? I'm going to use it. I'm going to go underneath it. I had to get my eyes on Okay, I popped that piece of wire through that little thing. I'm going to leave that sticking off just a little bit. And now I'm going to take the wire to the far side, twist it down tight on that side, give it a full revolution. And this is a little fiddly because you got to hold everything kind of snug at the same time. Give it a full revolution and then take those two lengths of wire and come back around to the, this side. Go through that ring one more time and then we're going to hook it. Why? I want to make sure this ain't going to come off. Okay. Bottom line because I'm going to hang it off of this. Twist that tight just like that and then tuck them two ends back out of the way. So I'm not going to hook anybody or do anything. Just like that. So now you see it's on there and it floats. I can turn it sideways if I need to, or this way, and I also just kind of fold it down out of the way. Okay? That's why. Now, why are we going to do that? Because I'm going to drive a stick in the ground, I'm going to stick that on it, and that's going to hold it by wedging the stick in there. Let me grab a stick. So, I drive this stick in the ground, and then I take that ring and put it on it like that, see? And it'll hang there. So I can hook it up here. Now, if I've got a little limb like that sticking off, I could hook it like that on it as well. But that allows that flame to be there, and I don't have to worry about this thing tipping over because it's hanging on something. It's not a tipping problem. So I drive this in the ground like a tent stake, and then I hook this to it like that where it's going to hang there. Notice the wick is far enough away. Okay? Now, let's put some fuel in it, and let's try it out. Okay, there it is fueled up. Notice how the wire comes all the way down to the bottom and binds up. 
Notice that it holds the fluid. It doesn't go anywhere. I wet my wick by doing that and let it drain for a second. I can hang it up just like that. Yeah, one little piece of wire is going to be in the way. i got to blow it the other way. There. Now, it'll hold on just like that and not be in the way. All right. Now, let's light it. Pop the cap on it, just like that. There's our wick. We'll pull the wick up so it's just standing up about that much. And voila, a little bitty homemade oil lamp. It's going to burn bright, and that neck is going to get hot because of all that flame. Seems to be burning okay. I can adjust the length of the wick because it's just pinched, remember? So when it's out completely, I can slide that wick further up or down to utilize it as I want. But there is our little oil lamp. Now we've got probably three, four, five mile an hour little breeze, and you see it's flickering, but it's not going out easy. Now I blow it out. Let it cool because that gasket in there will melt. That tip, that glass is going to get really hot. That's the reason you can grab the glass down here or with your stick on it, grab the ring right there and pick it up without touching that hot glass, see? Now that glass has got to cool down. Now it's not going to be cherry red, but it's going to be warm. Yeah, it's warm. Not hot, but it's, it's warm. Like coffee cup hot right now. If I had let it go for an hour, yeah, that top would be pretty hot. But you want to let it cool down before you put the cap on. Otherwise, you'll melt the seal in there and then it will leak and we don't want that. So, in conclusion, a simple do-it-yourself oil lamp for carrying to camp. Now, it goes out saying, don't put this inside of a tent, guys. Use some horse sense. This is an open flame. If this drops, you could pour out fluid and start a fire. So you got to be very aware of that now, don't you? So this has got to sit up solidly. That's one of the reasons for that wire right there and that ring. So I can anchor it to something. So it doesn't tip over in a breeze or whatever. So I can be safe with it. I can bury it in the sand. You know, if I'm in a, like a sandbar or something, I can just bury it in sand like that and set it going, can I? Could I cook over it? Probably if I had to. It's going to soot up them things depending on what you're cooking with. But you can use uh, cooking oil, olive oil, paraffin oil, or kerosene like this is. All of it works just fine, and that little glass will do just fine as a little lantern. I hope you've enjoyed this content, guys. If you have, please hit that like, share, and subscribe button. And go check out James' video at Waypoint Survival for the Hobo Lantern. I think you'll like the way he presented it. Till next time, guys, I'm Blackie wishing you safe journeys. Have a great day, guys.